Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask Enki. Today we're taking a look at the updates to the Procedural Crowds from the folks at the Fuse Studio. And this is called Procedural Crowds Pro. Currently, this is doing a 20% launch offer and for those who like to get this, you can simply go ahead and take a look at the link in the description that will bring you right here where you can grab it. This is running from now till the 17th of July of 2024. Now before we talk about the cool things that you can get with this brand new Procedural Crowd Pro, let's talk about some stuff that I believe a lot of you guys may want to see. And this is it. The folks at Humble Bundle have partnered with the folks at Blender market and they're giving us the essential game mod toolkit this is a beautiful pack of stuff that comes with 42 different items that consist of add-ons assets tutorials and a ton of things so just in case you've been thinking about getting the top of low or probably you like to get some weapons then you can simply come through and grab them all of these weapons are exportable and you can use them in any this is app of choice and it is also worth mentioning that for example if you like to get a rigged set of characters then you can get all of these from the folks at Treaty. This is a huge collection of stuff that is also available with this pack and even more so, you can even get some very interesting base mesh collections that comes with clean topology and UV. So all of these are right here, from add-ons like the Quick Baker all the way to the UV Flow Beta, the Trash Kit, the Face It for facial expression and performance capture by simply using your mobile device, down to plugins like the UV Pack Master version 3, Blender 2 Unity add-on, Blender 2 Unreal Engine add-on, and also Blender 2 Godot add-on. And for those thinking about learning tons of stuff then you've got a huge set of tutorials that are right here that you should definitely consider getting all of these are currently valued at a thousand four hundred and thirty five point twenty eight euros but at this point you can get this for 27.95 or you can get them for 32.95 and for those who like to get this then links is going to be in the description so do well to check it out and with that said let's dive directly into blender and take a look at how the procedural crowd pro actually works so we're gonna simply open up right here, how you get to work with this is super easy. All you need to do once you download this is to go over to edit, go over to preference, then you can go over to add-ons and from here you need to click on the install button to install this. And once you install it, go over to the preference of the add-on and then you can specify the part where the asset have been extracted. So this comes as two files, one is the add-on and then you have another one which is the asset that needs to be extracted and you need to direct the asset folder to look up where this has been extracted to and that is how you can get this going. And once you have that, you can click on the bugger menu, click on save preference and close the window. And with that done, once you tap in on the keyboard right here, you would notice we've got the crowds pro. So if we simply go in, you can notice that we have even more stuff. So let's start off with the very first ones. So the very first one you have here is the audience. So with this audience, once you have that clicked, we can select the kind of audience that we want. We can select the model that we have. Currently, this has only the casual humans, but of course, if you like to get any other kind of pack, then you might want to consider taking a look at the business pack or the summer pack. So any of these two packs that you need, you can simply go ahead and get it. However, this is the ones that are currently available. And from here, you can choose to select the gender that you want. In this case, I'm just simply going to leave that as male and we can set this as audience and click on add crowd. And so once we add that, this is what we have. You would notice that we have the crowd setting. From here, I'm just going to define where the floor is just to make sure that all of them are right there. If we press the playback button, you would notice that this audience have motions. You can also see that from here, we can change the width. We can also change the thickness and we can also give them personal space. So depending on the kind of audience you're trying to make, you can create personal space for them and you can have that. If you like the audience to actually look towards a given direction, then you can throw in a simple empty, have the crowd selected, go right here and make that an interest. So once we have this selected and we move this around, you would notice that the audience just simply moves towards that direction. One of the cool things that they've also added for this is weight painting. So for example, if you like to paint weight and you would like to use that to add direct how your characters should behave, then you can do that. So in this case, I can have this selected and we can simply go over to the weight paint and click on that. So once we have that, you need to make sure you have yourself a grid and you need to subdivide that grid depending on how much you want. And from here, we can also decide that we like them to walk. So once we have that selected, we can now click on add crowd. We can have this grid selected, click, go over to where we have the weight paint. And once we start drawing, we would have our crowd. So in this case, if you like your crowd to walk within a given pattern or a given path, yes, you can. So we can just have them walk straight and we can have them walk across and we can have them walk this way. You know, depending on what you want, 
you can have them do all of that working. So one other thing that they've added is simulation. So you can now cause simulation to happen. So we can have that grid selected, which is this one, and we can click and click on simulation. We can keep this as work, and then we can click on add crowd. So this is gonna add a bunch of crowd on that grid. Now, one thing you notice is everything stays very clustered, and so you don't necessarily get anything walking around. And if we go in and we press the playback button, you still notice that they are all in one place. So the best way for you to be able to have these things work around is to create a collection and put the grid in that collection. So to do that is pretty simple. All we need to do is press M on the keyboard and then we can go ahead and add a new collection. So we can click on new collection and I'm just gonna call this grid. And once we have that, we can click on okay and we have this going. So with that, if we go back, have the crowd selected, click on the ID, select the grid, there you have it. Now, if you also notice that we've got uh, a couple of things, you know, a couple of clusters still happening there, that shouldn't be a worry because all we need to do is go over here and click on the button update crowd count. And once we do that, this is automatically going to fix it. So once we bounce this all the way back and we press the playback button, you'd notice that within the grid, we have our characters working. For you to see what it looks like is pretty simple. For this, I'm just simply going to switch this over to cycles, set this to GPU, and we're going to turn on the denoise and go over to the viewport rendering. And with that, you can see what we have and they are looking pretty nice. And with the simulation, there's a couple of interesting things that you can do. So with the object selected, if you simply go all the way down to where you would find follow curve, you can attach a curve and the crowd will follow that curve. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the crowd do not go outside the mesh they were spawned from. So how you can get this to work is, you know, throw in that curve, Depending on the direction you like the crowds to go, you can simply go ahead and do that. Another cool property which is also available is the attract. For this instance, what we did was to create a cube and then we threw that cube into a collection called attract. And if you select the crowd, go back to the attract property that exists within the simulation property, you would notice that we've got a place where we can attach a collection. Now for this, we're simply going to attach the attract, crank up the strength, crank up the distance of attraction. And then once you press the playback button and you move the cube around, you would notice that the crowd simply follows. And that makes a lot of sense. Say for example, you like to have crowd having a particular kind of march. You can simply animate the object and the crowd will follow. And that is also one cool feature that now comes with this. Now with this done, let's take a look at something else which is pretty cool. So if we simply get a brand new scene, let's go ahead and create a plane. Add a loop right here and possibly we add another loop here. Get rid of these other ones. I'm just going to go in and dissolve that vertex which is going to be there. And let's have these two selected. Scale this. Once we have this, we can now get our crowds to stand exactly at the vertex point. Have the object selected click and then you can go over to on vertices so we can define what we want probably like them to be idle and we might want them to be mixed and we can click on add crowd so once we add that you can see it let's simply go ahead and scale this all the way up and also drop down the scale of the characters because we'll like them to be slightly smaller than what they are right now so i'm simply going to go ahead and set this to 0.5 that looks cool and then we can go in have this object selected and we can have some insertion. So the more insertions, the more we create stuff. So we can use this to create a crowd standing on individual vertices. And the cool thing with this is we can also choose to rotate these vertices. If you like them to simply focus on a particular object, then that is also very possible as all you need to do is to add a point of interest and attach that point of interest within the general section of the crowd settings. And here's another cool stuff that you can now do. At this point, you can create surfaces in the form of the surfaces however you want, and you can apply your models onto those surfaces. Another interesting thing that you can do with the group node is you can create a group of crowds and you can actually color code them. Now to any of these things that we've just seen, all of them, they do have parameters. So if you like to play with the parameters for the random curve, or maybe you like to play with the parameters for the follow curve, you can. Something else which is also very interesting to see is if you like to bring in individual characters, say for example, you like to see a high quality version of a particular character and you want to have that doing a particular thing at a particular time within your scene, you can import that in and you can like that however you choose. So this is it, some cool stuff right here. And for those who are thinking about working procedurally and you like to take advantage of this procedural crowd tool, which is now available, then links to this is gonna be in the description. So do well to check it out. More so, if you're 
you're also looking for very cool stuff that you might want to grab then we're going to put more links in the description and of course if you also want to grab this brand new stuff that is now available that offers you tons and tons of add-ons assets and also tutorials that you can get for literally little to nothing then this is also going to be in the description so do well to check it out tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend and i'll like to see you guys in the next one peace